Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hope all is well. Hope everyone's doing all right. Let's give a couple seconds for everybody to get on in there and then we'll get started. Mm -hmm. All right, it looks like everybody's on. So once again, good morning, hope all is well, hope everybody's doing okay. Uh, hope you're ready to start this fall semester. My name is uh, Mr. Tucker and I'll be your instructor for this semester, Math 161, I believe, right? Yeah. So um, as you know, uh, you should have received about four emails from me, um, assuming you got them uh, since, you were, since you have the uh, Zoom. Um, link and you're able to get on today. Uh, there were one or two people, <clears throat> excuse me, that didn't have email addresses in uh, SIS. So I didn't have an email from you, but uh, if you are up here, then that means you did see that these uh, emails that I sent were in um, Canvas. So just in case someone didn't know that they were in Canvas, let me go ahead and show you. Every time I send an email out to you guys, I will archive it here in your Canvas announcements. So those are the four emails that I sent out. So if I ever send an email, or let's say uh, you haven't heard from me in a while, maybe you, you know you want to see if I have sent an email out, then you always be able to go to announcements in your Canvas and go right here and that's where all of your emails will be archived. All right, all right, any questions on that? Everybody good? Okay, all right, got one person with the camera on, appreciate you, appreciate it. All right, so um, <laughs> going to those emails, let's look at what I did send. Well, first was just class greeting, just reminding you that, you know, this whole semester will be, you know, through Zoom, so through virtual. Now, what that means is uh, there is a difference between learning online and learning virtually. Uh, learning online, uh, there's a lot of times people can just send you uh, videos and um, you don't have to be taught synchronously. In other words, you don't have a class meeting time necessarily. But if you're talking about learning virtually, we will be meeting at our class appointed time. Uh, every single time, unless, you know, stated otherwise, if I have something come up, some, you know, emergency or something like that. Other than that, you know, eight o'clock, Mondays, Wednesdays, we will be here. Um, and I, you know, so uh, everything that we do will be recorded. I will send you a recording of that link, uh, you know, at the end of the week. So, you know, we have two classes every week. So I'll send you two, two links every week uh, of the recorded message, not message, but link. And, Lecture, there you go, of the recorded lecture. Uh, so if you do miss the class, then it's all good. Uh, just uh, sit tight and that link will be sent to you guys. Uh, let's see, send you the Zoom information for the class and then Math Lab access. So send you this email right here. I believe your code is different, but I'm just showing you what the email looked like. I'm talking about my Math Lab and um, access. Uh, let's see if I can magnify that, make it a little bigger. All right. So um, it's just giving you the steps to register for Math Lab. Um, you go to my Math Lab, maybe we'll do that before the class is over just so you can see how it looks. You click on register, type in the course ID. Your course ID is Tucker uh, uh, um, 67586. So I'm um, just telling you that one is not it. So don't copy that one down, but it is in the email that I sent to you guys. And then uh, you have three options. You need to input the access code that you may have purchased already, whether it be through Barnes and Noble. Uh, you may have purchased it, purchased it from a friend or purchased it online through Amazon, whatever way you got it. Um, yeah, you would type in your access code then. Uh, if you don't haven't purchased it yet, you can purchase access through the website. Um, so at that point, they won't give you an access code. They would just give you the access. Or you can click on the 14-day free pass, which would be a small link at the bottom um, where you can click on and just you, you have 14 days full access to be able to uh, use MathLab um, as you see fit. Now, once the 14 days are up, if you uh, haven't purchased 
full access, then it will ask you to do so. Um, if you're not ready to do it at that moment, it will lock you out. You will not lose any progress or anything you submitted up to that point. Um, I will still be able to see it, it's just that you won't be able to see it. You won't have access to it until you actually pay for the course. All right. Uh, any questions on that before we go to the next thing? Still in my still in math lab, but we're just talking about a registration process. Hey, Mr. Tucker. Hey. Hey, um, I, I emailed you yesterday about the uh, first edition access mm -hmm. code. Uh, yeah, so if anyone, I, I went to the bookstore last week and I got the book and they gave me the first edition access code. Mm -hmm. And it says on the course that you need the sixth edition. And I contacted support. They uh, said that the code is the same. Okay. So I just wanted to say if anyone ran into that issue, first and sixth edition, he told me it was the same. So. Okay, cool. Thanks. Thanks. I did respond to that email, right? Yeah, you did. Okay. Yeah, okay. you okay. you sent me in the right direction. You yeah. actually helped me out. So thank you for that. Okay, cool, cool. I just want to make sure I got a whole bunch of emails. I want to make sure I got you. Okay, thank you. Cool. Yeah, not a problem. Thanks for that. All right. Anybody else before we go to the next thing? Once again, we're still in math lab, but that's just the registration process. Anybody good? Okay. So where's my other one? The other one, the fourth email that you would have got from me is math lab specifics. So just telling you how we're going to use math lab. Uh, you have to get access to my math lab. You don't necessarily have to buy the um, physical book, the textbook, but you do have to purchase math lab. The reason why we don't make you purchase the actual book is because the ebook actually comes along with math lab, but you still have to purchase access to math lab. Um, all of your assignments will be generated through math lab, whether it be your homework, uh, any tests that we give, whether it's proctored or unproctored. Um, anything we do will be generated through math lab. That way you can uh, do all your work, do your submission, get instant feedback. Um, uh, I think the syllabus in math lab right now. Is the old one. I think only thing I need, I think I need, need to update one or two things, but other than that, it's still the same thing, still the same concept. Uh content, still the same content. I'll uh, check it out. Um when it comes to attendance, your attendance will be validated through Math Lab. So um I will look at attendance, you know, through Zoom and everything like that. But to really solidify your attendance, like let's say if you miss, remember I told you I was going to record a lecture, let's say you missed the lecture. And then I send it to you and you actually go back and review it. Well, I really don't know who, who goes back and reviews um, your lectures, um, the lectures or not. So really, they count as attendance, really, if you actually sit through the lecture, in my mind anyway. So really, uh, your attendance will be solidified through Math Lab. Um, that's like a timestamp. So if nothing else, let's say if you by some chance miss both lectures in a week, go in Math Lab and at least go in there and submit a, some, an assignment, go into homework. And come out of it or something, you know, so to say that, you know, you were in your homework and you were active. Um, so I will solidify once again your attendance through Math Lab. Um, let's see. Also, always make sure you keep lines of communication open. Um, if you're having issues with doing certain things, uh, whether it be Math Lab, let's say Math Lab goes down or something like that, Pearson goes down, or you're just having problems with uh, doing your work at this time because you got a lot of stuff going on, whether it be at home, work, whatever. Uh, every semester, every class, I have people that fall off the face of the earth. So if you don't want me to think that you're one of those people, uh, you do need to keep lines of communication open. Uh, you know, because if, if no one communicates anything to me, they don't withdraw, they stop submitting assignments, they stop everything, communication, stop coming to class, all I can do is give you an F. You know, so in order for me to not think that you're one of those people, then most definitely um, keep lines of communication open. Once again, you don't have to tell me intimate, deep, intimate details about what's going on. You can just let me know that, hey, you know, I'm still trying to make it happen. Got a lot of stuff going on. You know, if you can work with me and, you know, then we'll go from there as far as seeing what, what kind of action plan we need to take on in order to get you caught up. Um, you get unlimited amount of tries right here. Unlimited amount of tries to get the best grade possible on your homework. Um, and we'll look at that, like I said, in a second. Uh, the way I look at homework, 75 to 84.9 will be a 90% in the grade book. 85 to 100 will get full, percent, full credit, which is 100%. So uh, what that means is, uh, you know, you want to shoot for at least a 75. You know, you're still an A. But if you're trying to get full 100% and shoot for at least an 85. Uh, notice I didn't mention anything less than 75. Uh, that's because, uh, you know, unlimited amount of tries. 
uh, they're not unlimited amount of problems. So it really, at some point, you know, a problem will <laughs> regenerate itself and be the problem that you saw before and all that stuff like that. So I'm not oblivious to the process. So really, if you want to get 75, you know, it, it, you know, you could if you put the time in. So, uh, and that's just a C. So, um, but uh, I will give you a 90% if you were to at least get that C. So, uh, for each test, uh, there will be test reviews. They're not mandatory. Uh, if you don't do them at all, I will not look at you sideways. But if you score 85 or better on them, I will add five points to your grade, uh, to your uh, test, to that respective test. So that uh, that test grade. Um, you have two attempts to get the best grade possible in tests. You cannot do uh, without proctoring. So sometimes I will give, you know, what we would have normally called a take home test. Um, in other words, you can just take the test at any point in time on your own. Uh, proctor tests, uh, we will um, talk about how we're going to handle those later, um, you know, as we get come across it. Uh, like your final exam would be a proctor test where you would come into the come into the regular class period, make sure your cameras are enabled. You know, your cameras do not have to be enabled throughout your lectures. Uh, that's not a big deal. So if no one ever opens up their, uh, you know, camera, uh, I would like it if you did, because that allows me to give feedback like your classmate, you know, she was looking a little close at the um, at the screen. So they let me know, hey, I need to, you know, magnify the screen, uh, make the words a little bigger so that you guys can see it effectively. Um, so things like that do help. Um, but if you don't enable your camera throughout the whole, you know, lecturing process, uh, that's all good. But on test days that we are proctoring, you do have to enable your camera, you know, and all the stuff like that. But we'll talk about that when we come across it or come to it. And then for any test, uh, any test, whether it's proctored or not, then uh, you should email me um, your scratch word. All right. Questions on anything that I've said? Everybody good, everybody straight. All right, so let's go to Math Lab. All right, so like in the directions is mymathlab.com. So if you're talking about registering, you guys would register as a student and make sure I got the right screen up. Yep, just making sure. So you guys are registered as a student. Hit OK register. So you guys course ID was Tucker. Six, seven. So Tucker six, seven, five, eight, six. And so here's the, here's the course right here. And then from here, if you've already dealt with Pearson before, you can go ahead and type in your information. If not, go ahead and create an account and then ask you for all of your personal information and then create your account. So once you create the account, that's when they'll give you those three options that we talked about already. You know, either you're typing your access code that you've already purchased, like your classmate mentioned, you could have already purchased from Barnes and Noble, type that in, or you can purchase access through here. Or there will be, just like you see these little blue letters right here, there will be a 14-day free pass option down at the bottom of the screen that you can click on if you want to um, You take advantage of that. All right, so let me go back. All right, so you guys, this is false. Wait, okay, just make sure. All right, so here's your syllabus right here. And like I said, uh, that's the old syllabus. I need to update, you know, course ID and stuff like this, update a few things, but still going to be the same content. But just in case anybody needs it, let me go back. So right here, homework. And this is all of your homework for the whole semester. Two, three, four. Yep. So we go from chapter one to chapter four. Pre Calc two um, uses the same book and it starts with chapter five. 
So uh, if you know you're gonna take pre-calc two, um, this code should work for pre-calc two as well. I believe you can use a code twice. And if you're using the same book, um, then you should be good to go. Uh, so next semester, if you take a pre-calc two, uh, don't purchase a new code before you try the course ID that the teacher provides, you know, whether it be me or someone else. Uh, you should be able to use the same code because it's the same book um, for pre-calc two. All right. So, uh, well, that's your homework. And then right here, you have quizzes and tests. Right here, you see test one. And we'll talk about that in a second. But right here, what I want to make sure, you see how it says sample tests and quizzes. I cannot remove this. Uh, don't do these unless you just want to do them. I mean, but uh, yeah, there's nothing I can do with those. Uh, so let me say something in chat. All right, hold on one second. Mr. Tucker? Uh-huh. Those like tests and quizzes that you said we don't have to take, but we can if we want to, are they good like study material? That's a pretest. See, a lot of this stuff, because see, like it says, vocabulary quiz, like not really going to help you with your vocabulary. I would probably not mess with them because they may have a whole bunch of stuff. You probably have to fish through them to find the stuff that actually is relevant to you. Okay. Um, I, what I would more so do is, let's see, go to the homework. I would more so stick to the homework and if I want to do them over, because even if you get the problem right, you can click on it again. And I'm, you know, I'm about to go into you and show you guys and you can hit similar question, whether you got it right or wrong and still get another question. It's very similar to what you did, but the numbers will be changed. And I will get my practice doing that more so than, you know, fishing through that stuff. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yep, yeah, not a problem. Uh, good question, good question. All right. So, uh, so right here, I'm letting you do the first test um, on your own. So it will not be proctored just to, you know, hopefully give us the opportunity to get situated and all the stuff like that. Uh, when it comes to the whole course and everything. So, you know, like I said, when we talk about the actual proctor, a proctor test, you know, I'll give you a heads up, you know, and we'll talk about how we're going to handle it. But the first one is not going to be proctor. You have access to it right now, actually. Um, so when it comes to due dates, notice that they're, uh, let's see, you guys would see it as should be. Okay, there we go. Notice how all of them right now say 1217. I think that's the end, the last date of this class. Uh, what's gonna happen is as we get come closer to closing out chapter, chapter one, then I will put a due date out there. So I didn't wanna put a due date right now. And then let's say if we move a little slower or move a little faster, whatever, and then I have to move the due date. So what does that happen is, let's say we get to 1.5, 1.6, then um, I'll say on, let's say two Sundays from now, everything from chapter one will be due. You know what I mean? And then I'll adjust these dates accordingly. So right now that's just a soft due date as far as, you know, that, that 1217 just gives you access to everything. Um, like I said, though, at, this gives us the flexibility to move a little slower if we need to, or just be on pace for what this class is, uh, you know, set up for. And then uh, once again, as we get closer to closing out chapter one, then I will put, and normally my due dates on a Sunday, um, and then so at midnight that Sunday, then, um, you know, that's when everything will be due from chapter one. So every due date will be a block of homework that'll be due, a block of assignments. So chapter one's work will be due on a certain date, chapter two's work will be due on a certain date, and so on. All right, so questions on, on that. Everybody good with those due dates? Yeah, Mr. Tucker, mm -hmm. are we moving like what? Uh, one chapter per week? Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, no, see, you're used to the summer summertime. No, no. We right. Got 15 weeks. We got <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. Oh, no. Oh, no. No, we can relax a little bit. We can sit back and relax a little bit. <laughs> it was a really intense <laughs> yeah, class yeah, summer. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Most definitely a difference between 10-week session and 16-week session. So, Thank you. Yeah, not a problem. <laughs> All right. So just in case uh, anybody was wondering why she asked that, I had her in the summer for another class. And, you know, in the summer, it's a 10 week session versus a 16 week session. And so, you know, in the summertime, everything's bang, 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 bang. 
in the, you know, in the sun, in the fall, in the spring, you have 16 weeks and it's more relaxed and we don't have to move as fast. Um, so yep, yep, yep. That's why she asked that question. All right, let's see. Anything else before I click on one of these assignments? Yeah, we will most definitely not be covering a chapter a week. Uh, let's see, 1.2 is a good one. Yeah, 1.2 should be a good one. All right, that's just a definition one. Well, um, no, I'll do this first. All right, so let's say we go here. Um, so I'll check the following. Let's say, I want to say the answer is three. So check the answer. They give you, try to give you a little bit of a hint. Check it again. And notice now it says final check. So they give you three chances to get the answer correct. Uh, and how many chances depend on the complexity of the problem. Most of them, if it involves any type of calculation, they'll give you three chances to be, get the right answer. Um, and so notice the answer, they tell you what the correct answer is, uh, tell you what your answer is. And now, so if you close it out, notice they have this right here. If I were to hit this button right here, notice now it has a red X beside number three. Now, if I were to get it right, that red X will turn into a green check and it will give me full credit. Notice it says score right here, zero out of one. If I get the answer right, then it will give me full credit. Skill builder should be something that you not available to preview, you need to take, yep, okay. So uh, skill, skill builder, once you finish the assignment, what it will do is uh, if you click on it after that, it should give you some more problems or something to help you, you know, uh, with building up your skills to be able to solve this type of problem. Right down here, help me solve this. If you click on this, then it'll walk you through the problem. Uh, most people don't click on that because if you're doing the problem and it says, help me solve this, it will help you solve it. Then after that, it's gonna reset the problem and give you another one. So uh, you only do that if you're completely done with the problem. You're just like, you know what? I can't figure this out, help me solve this. Viewing examples, what most people like to do to give you a problem that's very similar to it in an outside window, you can walk step by step. And um, once you're done with that, then um, you can get back to the problem that you were dealing with. Also, some people like to print out, you know, all of the steps from viewing example. So you can do that as well if you like. Um, get more help, give you other tech, uh, tools. Some problems will have videos um, from another instructor, you know, one of Pearson's instructors, uh, where you can click on it and help you out. Click on textbook that'll send you to the place in the ebook where this type of problem is discussed. Uh, ask my instructor would you shoot me an email. Sometimes that doesn't work as efficiently as it should. So if you shoot me an email through ask my instructor and I do not respond, then always follow back up with me through regular email, uh, email process, whether it be just, you know, vtucker at tcc.edu or uh, you email me through Canvas. Either way, those I most definitely get. Sometimes this can be a little sketchy. I get them sometimes. So if you want to take your shot, then that's fine as well. Um, and you can print this problem out. Once again, Skill Builder will be accessed after you've actually finished the assignment, submitted the assignment. Um, any questions on your help tools? Uh, Mr. Tucker, just want to share with the classroom. If you get the first, uh, the first three try and then get you wrong, and then you could still make it correct by clicking a uh, similar question, mm -hmm. and then we'll come up with another a similar question with a different number. Mm -hmm. So. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. So that's how you will have your access to unlimited tries. You'll be able to hit similar question and that will reset the problem as she said. Yep. Right. Also, let me go back here. The first couple of problems were just like vocabulary or definition. Notice how that one, notice you only get one shot at that because there's only one answer and it's a worded problem. So if you hit final check, um, you know, it'll tell you what the answer is. So if you want to redo it, uh, it says try again. And so that one would just be, you know, the same one, you know. So that's what I mean by, you know, if you really want 75% on these assignments, you could do it because eventually the same problem, just like the one we just did, um, oh yeah, I did reset the problem. Anyway, we know that the answer was 10. 
So to be honest, if you keep it similar exercise, that problem will come back up because you may get unlimited amount of tries, but not unlimited amount of problems. So that's why I say if you really want 75, you can get 75. So that's why um, the marker is 75 to get uh, credit for doing your assignments. All right. Any questions on my math lab? Everybody good? Everybody straight? Okay, let's see anything else. Trying to see if there's anything else that I've missed before we get to it. I think we are good to go. So the way we will be doing our lectures. Uh, 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 uh. Should be able to see the notes right now. I'm trying to find a clear spot. I know I wrote this much down here. Okay, guess not. So, where's my pen? All right. So, um, we have uh, yep, got about an hour. Our class ends at nine thirty. 15. So we'll go ahead and at least get started in that 1.2. Um, so the way our class will be held, set up, you know, we will do our notes. You know, I'll write and talk. Some things will already be written because I already have some of these notes already written. And then, I'll, you know, if they are and I need to erase stuff and rewrite it, I'll do it in that fashion, as you'll see in a few seconds. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started and do a little bit in 1.2. Uh, may not finish, may finish, I don't know. Um, but any questions before we go ahead and get rolling? All right. So 1.2 is where we are starting. I wrote this little slide, but I'll rewrite a little bit. It's 1.2 linear equations and rational equations. So we're going to start off with solving equations. So an equation is just a statement that two algebraic expressions are equal. And also, since I cannot see most of you, if you are writing and I scroll up, um, always feel free to unmute or, um, you know, type in the chat that you uh, you want me to, uh, whether it be uh, go back up or some of that nature. I'll write some of the stuff a little better while you guys are writing. All right, so expressions, two out of expressions are equal. So an example, a light example that is x plus five equal to seven, that's an equation, example of an equation. Now I will warn you that 1.2 does not um, set you up now, I go all the way back to the beginning, but when you look at the assignments, so we, let's say you were to go to the book uh, in 1.2, it does not set you up in such a way like it's introducing solving equations. They are coming into it with the assumption that you had solving, you know, dealt with solving equations before. So if ever this book, because some, some of the concepts in this, sec, in this uh, book um, do attack it from the idea that I'm not introducing this to you, I'm expecting you to know some things. So if there are some things that you have questions on, make sure you get with me. If there are any, um, if, they, if you may feel like there are some holes in your knowledge that even I may have missed or anything like that, always make sure you communicate with me. Uh, as far as office hours are concerned, um, uh, you know, email me, we can set those up. I think it's in this type of, you know, scenario situation, it's, easy for, it's easier for you to say, hey, um, I have a question, so a few things, is it possible we can make time to meet and um, and we'll do that. You know, I'll meet with anybody. Uh, we just have to match up our schedules. So make sure we uh, take advantage of that. Um, but like I said, I'm gonna do my best to start from the beginning, make sure everybody's on the same page. Uh, some of the stuff you may already you know be okay with, but I just wanna make sure everybody's there. So a solution gonna be values or values that will make an equation true. So an example of that would be X equal to two for that equation that we we're dealing with. Uh, in other words, when I plug in 2 for x, uh, it will make that true statement. 2 plus 5 is equal to 7. So you should be asking yourself the question, whenever you're dealing with any equation, 
when is this equation true? Or in other words, in this case, when is x plus five equal to seven? And the answer is when x is equal to two. All right, so we will be solving by what I call opposite operations. Okay. Opposite operations, so addition and multiplication, I mean addition and subtraction are opposite each other. Multiplication and division are opposite each other. All right. And so they undo what the other one does. All right, someone asked about the course ID. Uh, don't forget to check your Canvas announcement. I just sent that though for you. Um, always check your cam Canvas announcements. I think, I don't know if you missed that. You might've came in a little late, but everything is archived in your Canvas announcements. So um, any information that's signed up to the class will always be there. So yep, yep, yep. All right, so opposite operations. Remember your goal is to get X by itself or your variable by itself. All right, so you need to undo what's being done to your variable. So if we go back to the equation that we have, X plus five equal to seven, I need to undo what's being done to X. So if I have X plus five, then I need to, that means I need to subtract five to undo the addition of five. Now, what we always gonna have to make sure that we are aware of is our equal sign because um, that sets up our equivalency. Whatever is done on the left side of our equal sign has to be done on the right side of our equal sign as well in order to set up our um, solvent and once again, to keep our equivalency. So if I subtract five on the, right, on the left side of my equation, then I need to subtract five on the right side as well. Five and negative five will cancel leave me with just X. And then on the right side, seven minus five is two. And that is our solution. Once I have my variable alone, simplify what's going on on the other side, I have my solution. And that is the foundation of solving equations. Your goal is to get your variable by itself and you're gonna perform opposite operations in order to do so. And whatever you do to one side of your equation, if you do the opposite operation, you have to do to the other side in order to keep your equivalency. All right. Here's just emphasizing that um, it's always understood that if you have your variable alone, then one is in front of that. You know, if you have two X, then two is in front of X. But if you just have X, then there's a, they assume, you know, there's a one in front of X. So make sure that uh, you hold true to that. So in other words, two X plus X is three X because there's a one in front of this X. So that's all that I was emphasizing right here. All right, so let's look at a few other ones just to make sure we're okay with the concept and then we'll roll on. So if I have Y minus 10 equal to 15, then in order to solve for Y, you add 10 to both sides. 10 is canceled, Y is equal to 25 because you add these two together. Here, 5a equal to 13. I'll divide both sides by 5. 5a is the same thing as 5 times a. So you divide both sides by 5. Five's cancel, and that leaves you with a is equal to 13 over 5. All right, so notice I left that as 13 over 5. Five does not divide into 13 evenly. So it's okay to leave that that, uh, that way. Now, if you do have, let's say, you know, this something like this, four over six, you are expected to reduce. So in other words, there was a two that was in the four and in the six. The two is canceled and that leaves you with two thirds. So you are expected to do this, but you do not have to convert it to a decimal. So converting to a decimal and reducing are two different things. You are expected to reduce your fraction. You do not have to convert it to a decimal. All right. Mr. Tucker? Yes. So with the 13 fifths, would you ever want us to reduce that to two and three fifths? Uh, that's a good question. So mixed numbers, you don't have to do that either. Okay. 
Yeah. So they're expecting you guys to be pros at converting to decimals and mixed numbers at this point. So leaving it as a uh, improper fraction is fine. Okay, thank you. Yeah, not a problem. All right, any questions on anything before we go to that last one? All right, I erased too much over here. All right, so the next one, last one, the last one of our one step uh, equations, we have X over nine equal to 11. So that's X divided by nine. So to solve, we would just multiply both sides by nine. Nines cancel. And 11 times nine is 99. All right, so any questions before we add more to it? All right, let me erase some stuff. So here we're looking at 2x plus 1 equals 17. So now we have more than one operation involved, more than one operation being applied to our variable. So best practice, now we could divide by 2 first, you know, if we like, but dividing by 2 means we need to divide each term by 2, which is going to create unnecessary fractions. So the best practice is to go ahead and subtract 1 from both sides. 1 and negative 1 will cancel. That leaves us with 2x equal to 16. And then here, divide both sides by 2. And x is equal to 8. Once again, if you ever want to check your solution, you can always throw it back into your original equation for x. And uh, if it is correct, then it will come out and create a true statement for you. 2 times 8 is 16 plus 1 is 17. All right. Any questions before we look at the next one? All right, hold on one second. I'm just seeing some emails. Let me see if some people are in here. Let's see. Okay, I see Brooks. You don't have to respond, guys. I'm just checking. I see emails saying that you couldn't get in, so I just want to make sure everybody's in here. All right, so Ashley Ham, are you in here? I don't think I see your name. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Sorry guys, just wanna uh, do this real quick, this first day so we have somebody trying to get in. Okay. All right. Sorry, guys. Like I said, I want to try to make sure everybody's able to get in here and see if we have any issues. All right. So let's look at this next one. We have two times the quantity of x minus three minus 17 equal to 13 minus three times the quantity of x plus two. So let me erase this. Stuff. All right. So the first thing we want to do is distribute. So we distribute that two, and in here we'll distribute negative three. So you don't just distribute three, make sure you distribute the negative three. So two times X is two X, two times that minus three is minus six, and then minus 17 is still there. So that's the left side of our equation. 
right side distributed to negative three, so that's 13 minus 3x minus 6. All right. So now before we move anything across your equal signs or equal sign, um, what I would do is simplify as much as possible on the left side, simplify as much as possible on the right side before I go moving things across the equal sign. Now you could uh, move things before simplification. Uh, it's up to you, but I'm just saying what I would do. So in other words, I would go ahead and combine negative six and negative 17, which will give me this negative 23. And then on the right side, I would do 13 minus six, which would give me this seven right here. All right, so this would be the result of that. Now notice if you're still on the same side of your equal sign, then you're not moving, you know, you're not using opposite operations. All you're doing is combining your like terms. Uh, you only do opposite operations if you're moving across your equal sign. All right, so notice now we have uh, X terms in two different places. You have X term over here and over here. Now your goal should be to get all of your terms with X on one side of your equation, all of the terms without X to the other side. It uh, doesn't matter which one you decide to move. Uh, if you do everything correctly mathematically, you'll still get the same answer. I'm going to add 3x to both sides. 3x cancels on the right. And then on the left, that leaves me with 5x minus 23. So you know you combine your like terms, 2x plus 3x gives you 5x. So like I mentioned, getting all your terms with X on one side, all the terms without X to the other. So now I need to move to 23 by adding 23 to both sides. Somebody said something in the chat. All right. So adding 23 to both sides will give you 5X equal to 30. And then we'll finish it off by dividing both sides by five. And that's x equal to six. All right, any problems before we go to another one? Make sure we're good. All right, so let's look at the next one. So we have 5x minus the quantity of 2x plus uh, 2x minus 10 equal to 35. So now if you have a minus sign in front of your parentheses, you're going to distribute that the same way we did. You know, if there was a number sitting out front, That minus sign is going to change the sign of each one of the terms inside of the parentheses. So that'll give us 5x minus 2x plus 10 equal to 35. Combine your like terms. 5x minus 2x is 3x. All right. And from there, we have 3x plus 10 equal to 35. So we can go ahead and subtract 10 from both sides. That'll give us 3x equal to 25. And then we'll finish it off by dividing both sides by three. And x is equal to 25 over three. All right, any problems, any problems? All right, can I scroll up? Good. Okay, next one. X plus two over four minus X minus one over three equal to two. All 
All right, so whenever you have something like this, if you want, you could keep the fractions. Most of the time, people don't want when it comes to fractions. Uh, so we're gonna do what we call clearing out your fractions. All right, so first thing you wanna do is find the LCD. LCD is always the smallest number that each denominator can divide into evenly. So uh, it's not the smallest number that can divide into both of them, but the smallest number that both of them can divide into. So that's going to be 12 for us. That's the smallest number that both four and three can divide into evenly. All right. Then we're gonna multiply each numerator by the LCD. Erase this. So notice we're not multiplying top and bottom. We're just multiplying across the equation. So everything uh, has to be affected by this LCD. Each numerator has to be multiplied by the LCD. So we have 12 times x plus 2 over 4 minus 12 times x minus 1 over 3 equal to 12 times 2. So where a lot of people make a mistake is that they forget to multiply uh, my race is still on. They forget to multiply the number that does not have a denominator involved. So always multiply every single piece, whether it has a denominator or not. Yep, yep, not a problem at all, not a problem. Make sure every single numerator is affected by the LCD. So now the next step is to simplify. So this four can now divide into 12 and leave you with three. This three can divide into 12 and leave you with four. And that leaves us with this quantity right here, or this equation right here. Three times x plus two minus four times x minus one equal to 24, because we got 12 times two on the right. Good. Now from here, we can solve our regular linear equation. Uh, we no longer have any fractions involved. So you multiply the LCD to each numerator in order to uh, divide, be able to divide those denominators out and leaves us with a regular linear equation. So from there, we can go ahead and distribute just like we did before. Here we'll distribute three, here we'll distribute negative four. And that's 3x plus 6 minus 4x plus 4 equal to 24. We can combine our like terms now. 3x and negative 4x is negative 1x or just negative x. And then six plus four is 10. Subtract 10 from both sides. And that'd be negative X equal to 14. But don't forget, we're not solving for negative X, we're solving for X. So you can take that negative and send it to the other side of the equation. So x is equal to negative 14. All right, any questions, any questions? All right, can I scroll up? All right, before you start copy this, let me see how many of those we have. Oh yeah, we know that. Okay. All right, so next thing that to get into in this section of what they call rational equations, very similar to what we just did. Uh, it's just that now we talk about rational equations, they are 
equations that have fractions involved, but you have that variable in your denominator. Um, any fractions are pretty much considered rational. Uh, but most of the time when they call it a rational equation is because you have your variable in your denominator. So we have one over X equal to one over five plus three over two X. So we wanna do the same thing that we did in this last problem. We wanna find the LCD. All right, so you're talking about the smallest term that X, five and two X can divide into evenly. And that's gonna be 10 X. That's just taking each different number or term that we see. So in other words, you see X, five, and then this two. And multiplying those together and that gives us 10 X. So that's that first step, finding the LCD. Let's see something in chat. Uh, what will happen is uh, before that week is out, when we record, somebody asks, will be, these lectures be posted to Canvas? Um, I will convert the lectures to a YouTube video, um, create the link, then I'll email them to you. And then any emails that I send out, I do archive in the Canvas announcements. So, yep. All right, let me erase this so we can walk through it. Yep, not a problem, not a problem at all. So uh, we multiply each numerator by 10x. All right. And now what's going to happen is that we'll be, we will be able to reduce. You know, we just follow those same four steps that we did in the last problem. So x can cancel. 5 can cancel into the 10 and leave you with 2. This two can cancel into 10, leave you with five. And also this X can cancel with this X. So when you look at what's left, I can erase this stuff. There we go. So what's left is just 10 equal to two X plus 15. So 10 times one is 10, two times X, it's just two X and then five times three is 15. All right, any problems, any problems. So remember your goal is to find your LCD first, multiply each numerator by the LCD, simplify, and this is where we are now. And now you wanna get all of your terms with X to one side, all the terms without X to the other, so we need to subtract 15 from both sides. 15 is cancel on the right. That leaves you with negative five equal to two X. And then divide both sides by two. And your answer is negative five over two. All right, questions, questions, questions. All right, next one. We got a couple more and then we'll be uh, done with these type of problems. So we have X over X minus three equal to three over X minus three plus nine. So notice we only have one denominator. So we don't have to fish hard to find LCD. LCD is X minus three. So we multiply each numerator by the X minus three. So that's what that would look like. Multiply each numerator by X minus three. All right, so now what that allows for, uh, allows us to do, bless you. Um, <laughs> X minus three will cancel, X minus three will cancel. And then here we'll be able to distribute this nine. So 
And so that'll leave us just X. And then three plus nine X minus 27. All right, combine your like terms on that right side of your equation. So that three and negative 27 is going to be negative 24. Now I need to take the nine X to the left side of the equation. And we have more than one X term. We need to get all of our terms with X to one side, all of our terms without X to the other. I already have 24 over there with a the 9x. So let's take the 9x over to the left side of your equation. So we'll do that by subtracting 9x. That leaves us with negative 8x equal to negative 24. And then divide both sides by negative 8. x is equal to 3. So make sure we're okay before we, not quite finished with this problem, but make sure we're okay before we go any further. Once again, if anybody came in late, I, you know, I'll try to give you guys a chance to write stuff down. If I were to move up or scroll up, and you still copy and always feel free to uh, let me know so I can make sure you're good. All right, so looking at this value of x equal to three, don't forget whenever you want to check your solution, you can always throw it back into your original equation to see if it works out for you. If we were to put this back into your original equation, notice you get three minus three in the denominator of both of your fractions. Now, it doesn't have to happen in both, it can just happen in one. But if you have three minus three, you get zero in your denominator. Uh, zero in your denominator is always undefined. And that's always going to be a bad look for us in mathematics, no matter what class you're in. If you ever get zero in your denominator, it's always a bad uh, situation to be in. So let's see my statement right here. Since x equal to three produces zero in your denominator, we cannot use it. And that means x is equal to, uh, x equal to three is extraneous. That's what we call solutions that we legitimately got down to we calculate everything correctly. That was our solution. You plug it in, it does not work. That's considered extraneous. And since x equal to three is our only solution, our only option for a solution, that means our answer is no solution. So what I mean by that is that uh, when we go to the next section, is the next section or the section after that, it's possible to have more than one, more than one solution. Let's say if I had x equal to three and x equal to five, and we just saw that x equal to three did not work. Well, I wouldn't write no solution because x equal to five is a solution. So our answer would just be the x equal to five. So in this case, once again, x equal to three was our only solution. So that's why we write no solution because the x equal to three did not work. Um, but we'll see, you know, when we come across that, we'll see that happen. All right. Any questions, any questions? So for that equation, mm -hmm. if it were like on homework or on a test, then the answer would be no solution. Yep. Uh, my math lab should give you, if not three options, at least two options, where you can either type in the answer, you know, you will either put in three or you click uh, no solution. You know, okay. that should be the bottom option. So, yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Not a problem. All right, I think this is our last one. Although some, yeah, okay, let's look at this one. Okay, so we have three over x plus six plus one over x minus two equal to four over x squared plus four x minus 12. So just like before, first move is to find the LCD. Now we have x plus six and x minus two as denominators. Now that third one, 
x squared plus 4x minus 12. That's x plus 6 times x minus 2 when you factor. You know, so when you, when you factor that. Now, this section does not talk about factoring. They assume, once again, remember I told you there's certain things they assume. They assume you know how to factor. If you have any issues with factoring, make sure you shoot me that email. If you need to set up a time to talk about it, or if you just need to see a video to remind you how to do it, I have you know other classes that I, other lectures that I have um, that talks about factoring, uh, you know, from you know the beginning, you know, introduction and so on. So, if you just want to see one of those lectures, let you know, shoot me that email. I'll shoot that to you, um, and you know, to make sure you're straight. Or like I said, if you want to talk about it, we can set up a time to do so. Um, but yeah, so that's factor. So notice the factorization of x squared plus 4x minus 12 is a combination of the first two denominators, x plus 6, x minus 2. So that will be the LCD. x plus 6 times x minus 2 will be our LCD. And so remember, we're trying to multiply each numerator um, by something that each one of these denominators can cancel out to. And that's why that denominator will be that for us. So let me erase this, these slashes. So we're multiplying each numerator by the x plus 6, x minus 2. And remember that last denominator was x plus 6, x minus 2. So I just wrote it in that form. So I just wrote it like that. So once you multiply each numerator by the LCD, you can go ahead and cancel out what's in common. So x plus 2 cancels, x minus 2 cancels. And then in that next one, that last one, x plus 6 and x minus 2 cancels. The whole denominator and numerator cancels out completely. And that leaves us with this result. Three times x minus two plus one times x plus six equal four. All right, so from there, we can go ahead and solve this equation um, as normal. So we distribute. You know, one times anything is itself, but just going through the process of, you know, distributing. So that's 3x minus 2. I said minus 2. 3x minus 6 plus x plus 6 equal to 4. All right. Combine your like terms. 3x uh, plus x is 4x. And then 6 and negative six will cancel. So that leaves you with just four is equal to four. Divide by four, x is equal to one. Any questions, any questions? Oops, I must this in the chat. All right, so I said, did I forget the negative 12 for the last denominator? Oh, no, we factored it out. Uh, I'll scroll up. Yeah, when we factor this to this, because when it's 6 times negative 2 will give you that negative 12 when you fall it back out. So, yeah, so that uh, that was a part of that, cal that factorization. Mm. Yep, not a problem, not a problem. So we have two more quick ones. Um, and you'll see what I mean by quick. Uh, but uh, any questions before we get to those? All right, so this next one here, we have two times the quantity of x plus one equal to two x plus three. All right, so we'll distribute 
and that'll give us 2x plus 2 equal to 2x plus 3. Now we can subtract uh, 2x from both sides. And that will leave us with 2 equal to 3, which is not true, right? 2 is not equal to 3. Um, now, remember I said it doesn't matter which uh, terms you decide to move first. It's possible you could have moved the 2 or the 3 and would have got 0 equal to 1 or maybe negative 1 equal to 0. Either way, you would have gotten a false statement. So it's not really about the numbers, it's the fact that your variables canceled out and you have a false statement. So notice what we have right here in blue. This is what occurred, your variables canceled. Once your variables canceled, you ended up with a false statement. If that occurs, your answer is no solution. So I just wanna point out this type of scenario because a lot of times people are afraid to let math happen. And so what I mean by that is they will subtract two X from both sides and they will have 2x canceled out over here, but then over here, they'll be left with just x, x plus 2. You know what I mean? But if 2x cancels on the right, then 2x minus 2x has to cancel on the left as well. So don't be afraid to let your variables cancel out completely. Um, once again, once that occurs, if you're left with a false statement, your answer is no solution. All right. So the next one, 4x plus 6 equal to 6 times x plus 1 e, uh, minus 2x. Go ahead and distribute the 6. Combine your like terms. So that would be 4x plus 6 equal to 4x plus 6. All right, minus 4x from both sides, that'll leave you with 6 equal to 6, which is true. So if your variables cancel and you end up with the true statement, then your answer is all real numbers. So in the one previous, there's no value you can plug in for x that will make it a true statement. In other words, there's no solution. And this one, no matter what you plug in, you can plug in anything for x and it will still end up true. So everything is a solution. All real numbers are solutions. All right. Questions, any questions, any questions? Mm -hmm. So that's 1.2. Um, so like I said before, I'll just do it up. I think somebody asked previous class. So that is my email address, vtucker at tcc.edu. Once again, you also can email me through Canvas. I should get those emails as well. Um, let's see. Any questions before we close out? Any questions before we close out today? Uh, actually, Mr. Tucker, for that last equation, mm -hmm. so like if we're like turning something in and we get to 4x plus 6 equals 4x plus 6 and we can already tell it's going to be all real numbers, um, do you still want us to show that we still minus the 4x, the 4x to say 6 equals 6? Or can we stop and say, yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah, as long as I see that there was some work that led up to your conclusion, then I'm fine. Because um, when you're doing scratch work, you know, I do hope that at some point you guys get to that point where you can start to see things and you don't have to write everything out. That is the hope. And that's why you do write so much in the beginning so that eventually you'll start to see things before they happen and everything like that. So, yeah, um, that's fine. That's most definitely fine. Okay, yeah. thank you. Not a problem. Thank you for asking. All right. Anything else? Anybody else? Anything else? So um, like I mentioned before, I just want to make sure everybody's OK. Um, every lecture will be recorded um, and then sent to you guys, you know, before, you know, by the end of the week, uh, whether it be on a Friday or a Saturday, something along those lines. Uh, if I can really if I am really, you know, have free time, I'll send it to you on Thursday or maybe even Wednesday once the class is over. Just depends on how free time really works for me. Uh, but you will get those links. Um, if for some reason technology fails, us, um, I have plenty of, you know, because of COVID and all this stuff, I have other lectures with other classes that I could just send you. Um, let's say, like I said, if for some reason this class didn't take 
or record. I can I have I have enough backups right now, uh, so I have a YouTube channel that I convert everything to and and give you guys the links. Um, so uh, my math lab, you know, you guys can go ahead and get in there. You do not have to wait for me. Uh, as far as one uh, anything past one point two, uh, we just covered one point two. If you you know you're really feeling it, you want to jump into one point three, feel free. Uh, keep on rolling till you you can't roll anymore. You know, so um, uh, it's not a problem with moving ahead. Uh, you do have a test out there, the first test, but once again, uh, it's not something that you have to attack right now. You know, we you know it's seven sections I believe in this section that we have to cover before you know you're ready for the test. Um, but once again, if you, you're ready, you're ready, feel free to roll. Uh, anything before we close, everybody good? All right. So you guys have a good one. Be safe. Uh, I will see you on Wednesday. Thank you, Mr. Tucker. Thanks. You guys have a good Thank one. You. Appreciate it. Have you. a good day, Mr. Tucker. Thank you. Thanks. You're the same. Take have care. Good day, sir. Uh, take care. Take care. Have a good day. Thank you. Take care. You got to do math lab today. No, you do not have to do math lab today. You can do it on your own time, but you don't want to wait too long, you know, to start getting in there. But no, you don't have to do anything today. All right. Um, I actually, I'm sorry. I had a question. I didn't want to say it and put in the whole class. That's fine. But um, so for the rational equations, the one that you got the no solution, no solution for, mm -hmm. how come you didn't check the one before? So let me go back to it. That's the one we got. No solution. So you're talking about this one right here, five. Over yeah. Two? So um, like, yeah. Go we got x equals three for this one. Mm -hmm. Um, and I would have just thought that was the answer. Like x, like we got x equals negative five over two. Mm -hmm. So how? Yeah. So how come we didn't check that one? Because it could have been no solution. I'm not. Uh, well, you could have. You could have. Okay. I, you know, I already knew that it wasn't going to you know, be a problem. Right. So I right. didn't. But yeah, you most definitely, every every uh, solution that you get, you can always throw it back into your original equation to see if it works. Um, now, something like this, the main, notice how I didn't even, I wasn't really looking to check the whole thing. I was just looking to see if I got zero in my denominator. Oh, so, right. uh, that's the main thing. That's the main red flag. Uh, because here we, we did everything correctly, but the answer was still no solution. Uh, so it was yeah. under the premise that we did everything correctly. You see what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. But if you wanted to check this one, plugging in negative five over two, it's still supposed to give you a true statement. Um, okay. Now, let's say if I got X equal to zero, then that will give me one over zero. Then I know that that will not work. Like I would. Okay, so you just really got to know, you just got to like look and then be like, all right, is my denominator going to be zero? And then if you see that, then check. Yeah, that was the main thing okay. we were looking for. Yep. Now, once again, if you want to go that extra step and really check to see if it really works for a solution, mm -hmm. That is the best practice. I know most people don't want to do that because that's more yeah, exactly. math. But the main thing is you do want to make sure that you're at least not getting zero in your denominator. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Yep. Not a problem. All right. Mr. Morgan, you have a question for me? No, no. Morgan is the middle name. I thought Mr. Russell. <laughs> I got three first names. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. So for me, um, I'm returning to school. I've been out okay. of school for about 16 years i'm 37 oh, okay All right. um, so any type of email or like prompters like youtube videos i'm all about it because okay so i have oh damn i'll hit my core i have um lectures galore on my youtube channel mm -hmm. of the of the classes before this you know whether it be talking about factoring side numbers I mean, all of the basics. Um, it's really about what what you want now. Now, don't get me wrong. Like, I mean, I still remember. You yeah, know. yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's what I was saying. Like, it, you know, it's and that's what I was assuming there. There are some things you remember. Then there are some things that you might not be as sure on as you would like to be. So um, what I can do is shoot me an email. And okay. what I'll do is I'll shoot you um, my YouTube link to the at least the first class like that and then if you type in if you go to that page and type in that title you can uh that class title then you can start looking at or clicking on different videos from that class and say oh, okay that was one or if you know there's something specific that you 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 know you're not sure of like like today we talked about factoring yeah okay. that was that was as soon as we got the factor i was like i know it but like 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So shoot me that email and I can go looking through my, my lectures and find the one on factoring. Okay. And then even after the factoring, after you look at the video, you're still not a little sure, or you, you know, you can always we can always set up another session. Outside. No, I mean it's not even an option. Like I'm going to mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going to ace this. Like I have all A's and one B on my transcript right now. Like I can't afford okay. to like have like not an A. Right, or, right, right. I don't I'm even like I don't even like the B on my transcript. So <laughs> we're just shooting for an A right now. And that's got you, got you. As you should, as you should. So okay. yeah, so uh, shoot me that email because I'm promise you I'm gonna forget. So shoot me that email and then I'll shoot, I'll shoot you uh, some stuff and uh, we can go from there. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Not a problem. All right. You have a good day, man. You do the same. Take care. All right. I think that's it. All right.